Let's talk about one of the most important superpowers that you can develop, especially if you work in the expert industry where you're teaching, consulting, whatever with other people. So that superpower is learning how to explain concepts simply so that normal people can understand them. Now, why is this so important? Because almost everything that we do has a body of knowledge that is encapsulated in a set of difficult to, to understand concept, lots of jargon, and oftentimes is dominated by the academic world with big words and and convoluted, here I am using big words and convoluted sentences as I try to explain that you shouldn't do that. Amazing. Okay, so you need to make things simple. <laughs> How's that? Okay, so there's several elements to do this. The first one is don't use jargon. And here's the problem. Jargon in itself is jargonistic. It's a jargon word. Jargon means the words that are used in that industry, abbreviations, precise terms, things that someone who does not day-to-day -day work in that industry doesn't understand what they mean. That's what jargon is. So what you've got to do is figure out what those words are in your industry and learn how to teach without using them or better yet, use that word, but then explain it so they understand it. Because here's the challenge. If they're going to continue to pursue learning in that area, they're going to encounter those jargonistic terms. And so what you need to do, part of your job is to help them to be able to deal with that word when they encounter it. And so what you need to do is, is what, I, what I like to do is explain the term Tell them what that term is and then explain it again using that term. So that's the way I like to do it. All right. Next is you can't make any assumptions of what they already know. What The, the challenge is that you can teach this person. I, I one time was in a, in a situation where we as a class, it was a, it was a class in my MBA program. We had all learned a whole set of terms. And one day, one of the students made a point and the, the professor stopped us and said, I just want to point out to you that six weeks ago, what he just said in one sentence would have taken multiple sentences just to explain. Well, here's the challenge. You probably have someone that in, let's say you're doing a group coaching call and someone asks a question, you know that that specific individual will understand you if you explain it in this way. The problem is all the other people on the calls may not have that same set of knowledge, may not understand those terms, may not understand what you're saying. And it, you've got two choices. You can either explain it so that that person can understand, or you can explain it so that it becomes valuable to everyone. May I suggest that what you do is sometimes, well, you want to make it so that everybody understands. Sometimes you can do that best by saying, John, let me give you the direct answer to your question. Give that. Now, for everybody else, let me explain what I just told John. What that does is it makes John satisfied. He can go on. But everyone else then gets the benefit of that explanation. And so now everyone else is brought up to a higher level. And eventually you can get to that point where like my university class where everyone in your program does understand those concepts and you can save time in the process. Next, don't work big, don't use big words or complex sentences. So this is actually two separate concepts. The first one is big words. So a lot of people, literally, they stopped reading in sixth grade. Well, they may have read longer than that reluctantly. And so they never really internalized, there's a big word. They never really became comfortable with big words. And so if you use big words, they just tune out. They don't know what's going on. Uh, a great example of this. Uh, my wife was teaching a church class one time and the kids were reading th something from scripture. And anytime there was a big word in there, because the scriptures are full of them, she would stop the class and she, she would say, what does that word mean? And the interesting thing is about 50% of the class of the time, nobody in the class could define that word. 
And these are kids in high school. These are literally 15 to 18 year olds. Okay. And, and it was just astounding to us all that these kids who had grown up hearing these words all their lives never really understood what they mean. Well, that's the case too with your students is that many of them have heard words maybe over and over again, but have never really gotten them. And so what it does is it cripples their ability to understand what you're saying and they never get the depth of what you're saying. So you've got to, number one, avoid using big words. Number two, if you use them, explain them. Number three, recognize that there are concepts behind those big words that require those big words to get explained to them so they can then understand those concepts. Second part of this, so notice I, I held with this card and I said, no big words or complex sentences, complex sentences. So if you explain it using academic speak, where, you know, you can't use first or second person and you have to do things all around. And, and in other words, you can't use I, we, you, your, any of those kinds of words. You have to do everything in third person saying they, you know, th those kinds of those kinds of terms. You can't do that in normal human speak. So what you've got to be able to do is to step back and explain it like you would for a sixth grader. I believe strongly that everyone should have a sixth grader or a fifth grader or a fourth grader or 10 of them in their lives. Why? Because it teaches you how to talk to normal human beings. Plus, if they're your grandkids, you get a huge amount of joy out of them. So how do you go about this process that I just explained of not using big words, not using jargon, not using all these things? Well, the first thing I suggest you do is to start by finding a sixth grader and probably not a really bright sixth grader. Uh, you know, you want, you want somebody basically, well, I'll explain that in just a second. Let me say this, by the way, don't do this. Don't go find a sixth grader if you're explaining tech. The problem is sixth graders have grown up with it. They get it. Instead, if you're if you're teaching tech, go find a 65-year-old who doesn't do tech. They become your sixth grader in this particular case. All right. So the mindset that you're trying to do here is the mindset of telling stories to kids. You know, I love that moment when you sit down on the couch and you pat the couch next to you or you put your arm up or would you like to read and the little kids come running up and, they, and the, the littlest ones snuggle up right next to you <coughs> and the bigger ones get a little bit farther away because they don't necessarily need to see the pictures or they're way behind you or something like that and you start to tell a story to this group of little ones. That's the way I picture trying to explain a complex subject to big little ones, because every one of us has a little one inside of us. Every one of us loves to hear a story. Every one of us loves to have people talk to us with the love in their voice and the caring that they used when I, when you used to snuggle down next to mom or dad or grandma and grandpa or aunt or uncle or whatever, or your kindergarten teacher to hear these stories. And so that's the image that I get in my mind is, little kids down beside me and I'm trying to explain it to them. And that makes all the difference in the words that come out of my mouth and the tone of voice that comes out of my mouth as I'm trying to explain it to them. Okay, I've got a few more. I, I realize I'm going a little long here, but stay with me here for a moment. And so in the process of explaining it to, with this mindset that you're explaining it to small children, even though you're explaining it to big children, you know, the, 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 there's the thing of, of someone, someone once asked somebody, how do you speak so comfortably in front of this group? And he says, well, I picture them all naked. Well, I don't picture them naked. I picture them as being the little version of themselves, you know, the grade school version of themselves. And then I can talk in a way that they understand. And But the, the key thing is you don't want to just talk to them. You want to listen to them as they talk to you. Because as they talk to you, they're going to reveal to you what their real understanding is. I also suggest that you take several of these key concepts and write the explanation out. Try to do it in one to three sentences 
explain this tough, this difficult, this jargon filled, this big word filled, this complex topic out that way. And then what I suggest you do is you sit down and you critique it. Ideally, you could critique it with a sixth grader around and let them help you critique it too. What you're trying to do here is not just nail your explanation of that one thing, but more important, you're looking for the mistakes that you commonly make. I will tell you, one of the key mistakes you make is that you use jargonistic words. You use words that you assume that everybody else understands what they mean. And the, the key thing is the more precise you are in, in delving into your market, the more of those you have. And so you've got to shed those and step back and not use those terms. The worst jargon, by the way, is the jargon that you have in your own life and your own company where no one outside of your company it understands that term. So if you build a community and your community always understands that whenever you use this word, this is what it means, that's death. Because everybody you're trying to market with who doesn't understand that concept, you're going to keep using those words and assume that everybody gets it. They don't. Okay. Use short, simple sentences in this process. Ideally, noun, verb, adjective. <laughs> that's, that's it, you know. Okay. Ideally, you're asking questions if they understand it. One of the best things to do in a group coaching situation is to ask, is to, someone asks you a question, you answer that question. They say, did you understand that? Which is directed at the person who asked, asked the question. Then ask the question, is there anybody else here who didn't understand what I just said? That suddenly starts opening up visibility to you of, oh, I've got a hole that isn't explained here in my, in my work. Ideally, get them to explain it back to you so you understand what they said. And as they do so, be careful not to focus on their misuse of words. Oftentimes, we have precise words that mean something, especially in things like tax or accounting or something like that. There's words that have precise meanings, and if they say them, they mean it actually means something else. So they explain in their words, you listen to the whole thing. Don't stop them and say, oh, no, that's not what cost of goods sold means. You know, let them explain the whole thing. And then afterwards, fix their definitions. I know you said cost of goods sold, and this is what you meant. Here's what it really means. And the reason I'm explaining this is so that you won't get embarrassed next time you talk to somebody who understands accounting. But I can tell that you understand the concept of what we were talking about. I just want to make sure that you use that word correctly in the future so you don't get embarrassed. That makes sense the way I explained that to, to, to you? Okay, so there's the essence of this. If you want to be running around with like an invisible cape on because you have superpowers, learn how to explain things so that normal human beings can understand them. You'll be better. More people will learn more. They will become loyal to you and they'll love you. <laughs> What's your thoughts? Does it make sense to you? What did I miss in all that explanation? Let me know in the comments below. This is Don Crowther saying, just go do this stuff. Mm -hmm.